The next example I want to show is someone who's been very inspiring to me and a lot of other politicians that I've met is Antonius Mocas from Bogota, um, Colombia. So he, uh, this is him. Um, <laughs> He was the mayor between 1993 and 2003. He was the son of a Lithuanian artist. And at the time when he ran for mayor, mayor Bogota was in dire straits. And basically, he thought he could have a chance um, and possibly use the city as a social experiment. Um, he claimed to use positive so social mechanisms to change. And I just want to read you something from an interview. So while he was mayor of Bogota, he received occasional death threats. Therefore, I had to use a bulletproof vest I made a hole right where my heart is. The hole was in the shape of a heart. I believe this kind of gesture gave me more protection. Um, so some of the things he did. He really used humor and performance um, and spectacle. You can see this was his super citizen outfit. And his idea was to gather citizen or, or um, community participation in order to make change. Um, one thing he did is he hired um, 42 mimes and had them direct traffic because um, <laughs> pedestrian deaths were huge. So these, he thought that um, Colombians would be more affected by being made fun of than being fined. Um, it worked, the, homos or the death rates went down within months. People started volunteering to be mimes and directing traffic and making fun of people. Um, he put big hands, like oversized hands with a thumbs up phone in the streets and he said if you see something do, somebody doing something bad, put the phone down, if somebody's doing good, put the thumb up. Um, one thing he did was, um, oh, okay, I'll go this one. This is a, one of the most amazing stories. So he had a, he also initiated a women's night out because no women would go out because it was so dangerous. Um, so at, on this certain night, he asked all bars to have women bartenders, the police force to be all women, and for men to stay home with children so that the women could go out. And on these nights, homicides were down incredibly, and so now it's a monthly event. Um, but the other way he dealt with homicides was he um, worked with priests and city officials to go into confessionals, and he did a night, a night called Weapons Free Night. Um, he asked people to bring their guns into the confessionals anonymously and trade them for food stamps. And they got over like 40,000 guns during this prop program. And they melted them all down into baby spoons. And then as to broadcast the success, because during, those time, during this time, the homicide right, rates went down so far, he had teens come out and lay down in the graveyards in these outfits and rise up and walk through the city. Um, so this is, um, he, he also dealt with the water conservation effort. He had garnered respect and people thought, and people loved him. So he went on national TV and was taking a shower and he would, he was completely naked but filled with suds and he'd turn off the water while he was sudsing up and said, you know, look how much water we waste. And within a few months, the water problem had diminished significantly. Um, so I'm almost wrapping up here. The, just thinking about how, um, when, this, when things get at rock bottom, you try anything by any means possible, but how can we think about doing that before things get to rock bottom? Um, another thing I'm thinking about is just the visual impact of his campaign. So he's dressing up in these outfits, he's having people perform, wear a costume. Um, and this was something I saw in the New York Times that really struck me. It was, it was mostly the visual, like why are all these red tents on, this, on, the, on the river in Paris? This was a group called the Children of Don Quixote, who um, had these tents made as a protest of, of homelessness and the city not dealing with the lack of housing in Paris. Um, so it got national press and was very, um, somewhat successful, but um, as a symbol it was very important. This is a picture of a tent city, tent city in Richmond, um, California. It's in a place called the Iron Triangle, which has the highest homicide rates and um, drug issues. And the, basically the community got tired of it. They were like, this has to stop. We're gonna go camp out in this zone in a protest, come together as a community, ho hoping that just by density of population that the violence would stop. Um, it did stop. Like the, the city of Richmond was like, what, what's going on? And they heard about this tent city, so they went down there.
they, they decided, okay, let's give these people food and keep this going as long as we can, um, that doesn't really solve the, the problem. But what's been going on is once a month they have tent city campouts and the city provides food and money for entertainment and the crime rates have been going down. Um, last two examples I want to give are artist initiated projects in cities. So this is an artist, Frederico Garcia Dorsi in, um, Dori in Madrid, who has been studying shepherd culture and the, the loss of, um, or the diminishing shepherding culture in Europe. And so he organized shepherds in Europe to come together and go through the center of Seoul, which used to be the path of the shepherders, but because of the growth in the 80s, it, they made it illegal to do this. And when they first entered the city, the police were like, oh, you know, how do, what do we do? We can't really arrest the sheep. <laughs> and by the end of the promenade through the city, a lot of the older people in the city who remembered this phenomena were following them. They brought wine and they celebrated at the end of the city. And now it's sanctioned and it's become a world, it's, become, it's in its third year and it's become a world conference called the World Gathering of Nomads and Transhumanist Herders. Um, so people come as far as the Maasai and Mongolia to, to convene and strengthen their rights as um, herders. And the last, um, these are just some pictures actually that are really nice. So these are, they, they organize meetings now after the procession. And then I just wanted to end on the last group called Muf. Um, from the United Kingdom, who used, again, performance and, and spectacle in thinking about a redesign of a park that they were um, commissioned to do, and that they had found out that prior to being a park, it was a pasture where horses lived. So they decided to become horses in order to plan their park. So they did several participatory <laughs> meetings. <laughs> Stanford, I want to show. Maybe, maybe you Stanford I have seen this, but um, in thinking about remaking and reconceiving, um, these are there was a project in the late or early 70s called Stanford Taurus, and they the um, Stanford hired an illustrator to illustrate what that place might look like, and these are some beautiful drawings um, that he did, and this was supposed to be in orbit in 1987. Um, but just looking at how this projection of, of basically what life looks like here in Palo Alto <laughs> into um, space and thinking about how much time and effort we think about life out there. Um, and this is one that he even included the hippie communes in the, in the hills in the 60s. Okay, out in there. <laughs>